Episode 5 of Project Redline. Thanks to everyone for tuning in so far. We're really on a roll and we're starting to get through some of the things that need to get this Mazda to the drag strip. This is going to be a mega fabrication heavy episode. We've got some cardboard sheet, we've got some textures, we've got to trace outlines onto alloy sheet. We're going to bend, cut, weld, and turn that into an actual aluminium custom fuel cell. Then we're going to make our custom three pump fuel pump hanger, and then we're ready to whack that in the car, and it'll be another job ticked off the list. So it's time to make our fuel tank. We've chosen to fit the fuel cell in the engine bay for a few reasons. Firstly, we can cut down the distance that the fuel has to travel. In other words, short fuel lines. Secondly, if we ever want to go to a mechanical style fuel pump, the cell is already made and in position. It also looks pretty cool. After measuring everything up, it's time for our tried and true cardboard template method. After some cutting and taping, we have our mock-up ready. Okay, so we've slightly revised the tank, so um, we've chopped about 30 mil out of the top of it just because we wanted to make sure there was definitely going to be heaps and heaps of clearance for for everything under the under the line of the bonnet. So more than likely you'll have like a, a filler here. Um, so we had to make sure that we had enough room of course for that. So we screw that on. We've definitely got enough room there. Now one of the other things that, that we had to make room for also is uh, this rollover vent. So um, what this is is basically uh, a fitting with a uh, stainless steel ball in it. Um, so when it's up this way, the, uh, the stainless steel ball sits in a, on a, like a little circuit and lets air pass it so that the tank um, can breathe. If in the case of, of the car rolling over to ensure that um, no fuel comes out, when the car is upside down, that ball sits on a, on, um, a machined out surface and basically seals out any, any pressure of fluid trying to force its way past the ball, keeps the ball against that machine surface, which means uh, nothing can get in the, in the event of a rollover. So it's just a fitting I had lying around. The fitting will go on top of it here. So um, if you think about, this is basically the, the top of the skin of the bonnet. If we've got a fitting welded on there and we've got this screwed on, um, you can see now that, you know, there's, there's definitely enough room there. So, you know, we won't have, won't have any clearance issues there. For the fuel pump set up for this, um, fuel cell, we're gonna be doing something pretty differently. I mean, a lot of drag racing cars will generally run a uh, mechanical fuel pump setup where a mechanical pump mounts here somewhere, it's gravity fed to a mechanical pump and the mechanical pump feeds the whole system. Very, very common most uh, methanol setups. We're running E85, so the fuel demands aren't quite as great, especially with the power we, we expect to only only really make with, with this car. What we're gonna be doing is uh, machining uh, from that 12 mil alloy plate that we used for the engine mounting plate. Um, and making a, a carrier basically to mount three uh, 340 litre an hour E85 safe pro float in tank fuel pumps. So the pumps will actually be submerged in this tank. Um, the carrier will hold the pumps, uh, we'll mount it on here and it'll have one dash 10 fitting coming out that'll split off into two rails, come back to the return rig um, and then return back to the tank as well. We should have well and truly enough you know, enough fuel pressure there. I mean, it's almost, it's a bit over a thousand litres an hour, so um, shouldn't have any issues with fuel supply uh, at all. Time for the serious stuff to begin. Starting by cutting apart our template, then tracing it onto aluminium sheet and cutting it all out into one big piece. Here's our template. And Here's your alloy sheet. Next up, we need to turn this big sheet of aluminium, or for our North American friends, aluminum, into a shape that resembles our template. So to do that, we need to head over to the bender. Yeah, that's right. And this bender, we actually made it on an earlier episode in the Full Boost Tech Files. So if you want to know how to make one yourself, check out the link in the comments. We need to put three bends into this flat sheet to get it into our box shape that we need for welding. Okay, so this is a sheet metal bender or a press brake or a pan brake. It's designed to clamp the work piece. What we want to do now is, is basically bend all of this over 
to 90 degrees. So we've just got an angle finder here that we set at 90 and we can just easily just hold that up against there and, and see that. So as you can see now, you should be able to see it. it's at zero. So uh, we start bending. So first up already, we've got it bent uh, to about 45. All right, so we are now at 65. We're now at 80, so we're almost there. This is the basis of our tank, so our tank that we know sits this way. We will weld up this edge now. While it's apart, it gives us time to uh, machine everything, weld stuff in the top, machine that hole in the top as well. So in order to tie in all the sides here, uh, we've just got a bit of a clamp apparatus set up here. So what we'll do about is we'll put like a, uh, just a, a tack weld essentially here and another one here. Uh, and that'll hold it all together and we'll be able to take the clamps off. So with the use of the bender, an angle grinder and some muscle, we're ready to weld. Now that the box will hold its shape, it's time to weld the base, the filler neck and return fitting in place. Alright, so the next step is to weld uh, that there and uh, that there. To do that, we obviously need to drill some holes first. it taking shape so that's our fill this is a breather and also a rollover vent so it, it's it's dual purpose next will be uh, to mill out this section for our three pump setup next we need to shift our focus while the tank isn't completed to fabricating the fuel pump carrier yeah that's right now I've gone a little left to center here for a drag car and most drag cars have traditionally run a big big single pump or even a mechanical fuel pump I've channeled more of the street style setups that I build for customers. I'm actually making a three in-tank pump fuel pump carrier, and that'll sit on there. And these three in-tank pumps will actually supply close to over a thousand litres an hour, so it's more than enough for their power setup on E85. It also allows a little bit more room if we want to run some more boost in the future, but it is a little bit different setup. At least we're making the fuel tank still, so if we do want to make a mechanical fuel pump work with the car later, it'll still be the same fuel cell and it'll still work fine. Okay, so here it is, our three pump in-tank carrier. So it's gonna sit pretty much like that. We'll have our fuel top cell up here, so we'll cut a, a much bigger hole. Um, this is just one we actually had lying around, so it uh, means I, I don't have to make one, which is great, saves time. Uh, we'll machine off, off this, uh, weld it flat, uh, and then weld, weld this hole in, so it's just a, a flat piece uh, of alloy. Uh, we'll more than likely run one pump, uh, all the time and then the other two pumps will will turn on at, at different stages just so you know we don't have a greater fuel demand than, than we really need when we're just idling in the pits. These pumps are the ProFlow E85 340 litre an hour in-tank fuel pump. Yeah so they should well and truly be able to supply the fuel needs for our system. So I mean 340 litres that's um, you know a little over a thousand litres an hour so shouldn't have an issue with uh, fuel supply there. We'll get this 16 uh, mil alloy rod uh, we'll cut it to size and it will basically just slide in here. Alright, so it's time to make this bar stock into tube. We do that with the milling machine. Let the chips fly. Alright, so the tank's really starting to take shape now. Uh, we've got our filler, we've got our rollover vent slash breather, and we've got our large single dash 10 feed line. Mount the fuel regulator, see where we want to position that, and then, um, then we can work out where we want the return, because the return might end up on the side here or something. Okay, so the fuel system will basically be 
a single line coming out of here, running down, splitting off to a Y piece uh, into a primary rail, a secondary rail, and then two, two lines coming back, both to the return ports, and then the return drain back to the tank. I'll see if the factory bracket that comes with this Turbo Smart FPR 2000 rig will work there properly. If not, I'll just um, we'll just make one out of alloy anyway. With all that sorted and the carrier complete, it's time to seal up this fuel cell. And now it's just a case of fitting this to here. Uh, generally, we start with a couple of tack welds down here, and then it's just a process of forming this into place uh, along the way. That looked like a lot of hot work, even from behind the camera. Yeah, well, so I tell you what, hats off to the boilermakers and that to do this for a day job in hard, hot, windy conditions, because that was just honestly a terrible job. I'm glad it's done, it's finished. Uh, it's time to put that in a great pile that's growing with other stuff that needs to go off the powder coaters, and we can move on to the next job. On the next episode, it's intake time. So we'll be looking at making a plenum, as well as a custom fuel rail setup that's required. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you receive notifications as soon as the next video instalment comes out. Give us some feedback, write in the comments and let us know what you think. We've got some cardboard sheet, some textures. We're going to start doing some uh, bendy bendy and uh, cutty cutty. What the? She's <laughs> extra ridiculous.